Good morning po. Welcome back sa ating lecture room. Ngayong araw na ito, pag-uusapan po natin itong isang Latin legal term na pacto de retro. Ano po bang ibig sabihin nitong pacto de retro? As usual, ginagawa po natin is nagbibigay po tayo ng example. At ang parties po dito sa ating pacto de retro na usapan, ito si Pedro de la Cruz, mayari po ng house and lot. At binibenta po niya kila Juan at Maria Reyes. Alright. So, ang transaksyon nila na pinasok is that it is a pacto de retro sale. Okay. And what is this pacto de retro sale? Well, basically, itong pacto de retro sale, ang ibig sabihin lang po nito, in usual language na naririnig natin, no? the usual term na naririnig natin is deed of sale with right to repurchase po. Ibig sabihin, bibenta niya, pero meron siyang karapatan na bilhin ito balik. Kaya nga, deed of sale with right to repurchase. Okay, so, ang ibig sabihin po ng ang deed of sale with right to repurchase is a pack to the retro sale is a sale transaction no? where the buyer immediately acquires ownership of a property but the seller can repurchase the property within a specified period of time. If the seller does not repurchase the property within the agreed time, the ownership of the buyer becomes absolute and he may ask now the court for the consolidation of ownership. At sa Tagalog po, no? meron po tayong Tagalog version, ang pacto de retro sale ay isang transaksyon sa bentahan kung saan ang property na nabili ay pagmamayari na agad ng buyer. Ngunit maaring bilhin muli ng seller ang property sa loob ng itinakdang panahon. Kung hindi bibilhin muli ng nagbenta or ng seller ang property sa loob ng itinakdang panahon, magiging lubos na ang pagmamayari nito ng buyer at mari siyang humiling sa hukuman para i-consolidate o pagsamahin ito bilang kanyang pagmamayari or kasama sa kanyang ari-arian. So, yan po ang pacto de retro sale. Okay. Now, ang pacto de retro sale, as I said, may deed of sale with right to repurchase mo. Ang right to repurchase po, no, big sabihin is that yung karapatan niya na bilhin, balik ito. Meron palang mga transaksyon na ganyan. <coughs> benta, tapos bawi. Yan ang benta, bawi. No? Pwede po. <coughs> now, Naalala po ninyo, nag-discuss na tayo ng legal redemption. Ito pong deed of sale with right to repurchase is conventional redemption. Yung sa legal redemption na na-discuss natin, yung sa previous natin na episode, is that abatas ang nagtakda ng karapatan. No? This is uh, co-owner or co-heir na binenta nung kabila na co-heir ang kanilang property. Uh, yung share nila sa estate. So, pwede pong i- Redeem, no? That is legal redemption. Ito po, conventional redemption. Eh, sino po ang nagbibigay nitong itawag nating right to repurchase or karapatan na bilihin ulit? Kasi right eh, karapatan. Yan po, right to repurchase o yung karapatan na bilihin ulit ito, nanggaling po ito sa kontrata po na ginawa or in-execute ng parties. No? Ito si Juan at saka si Pedro and Maria Reyes. So, yun po ang kanilang uh, ginawa. No? So, with that, dan doon sa kontrata nakalagay na pwede niyang uh, bilhin balik ang property. So, kaya nga, ang tawag niyan is pacto de retro sale. For example, binibigyan ng 6 months no? na you have the right to purchase it again. Bilhin mo ulit balik sa akin. And within that 6 months time, antay ako. Although, sabi ng batas and Supreme Court decisions, yung bumili, kanya na yon property na yun. Kaya lang, binibigyan lang niya yung nagbenta ng karapatan na bilhin ito balik. No? Magiging absolute lang ito kapag dating sa 6 months, hindi niya exercise yung karapatan niya na nakasaad sa kontrata. Okay? Ang karapatan po niya, nakasaad, nakalagay po sa kontrata. Okay. Now, take note of this uh, elements ng kontrata. No? I-discuss ko po ito sa inyo because very important. No? Uh, una, yung sinasabi natin, dapat may consent at meeting of the mind. So, pag mag-enter ka ng contract, ibig sabihin, nagkakaintindihan kayo kung ano yung pinag-usapan ninyo. Kung ito ang transaction ninyo. Di ba? Kung deed of sale with right to repurchase, ibig sabihin, bibigyan ng 6 months to 
to repurchase it again, oh, yun, no problem. Yan ang meron kayong meeting of the minds. And of course, another one is yung object of the agreement. Ano ba yung object? Yung lupa. Yun po ang subject matter natin na kaya tayo nag-enter ng transaction at dahil interesado sa lupa mo. At yung uh, makarapatan mo to right to repurchase is part of the agreement in the contract. And ano po ang consideration at bakit ganun? Maraming pera. Okay, binili ko sa'yo. May right to repurchase ka or bayad sa aking servisyo. Mga things like that. No? That is a deconsideration. Yun yung mga elements ng contract. Para pag kompleto po yung elemento na yan, <coughs> yung tatlo, eh, okay po. Uh, perfect po ang kontrata. Valid po ito. Hindi po maka-question. Kung ma-question man, matatalo yung nag-question. No? Kasi legal ito siya. So, having said that, Ang pinaka-importante po na nagkakatalo minsan talaga pagdating sa hukuman is itong consent or meeting of the minds. No? Yan ang usual na nagkakaroon. No? Kasi iba ang interpretation ng isa sa kanyang transaksyon. Ang sa kanya, ito ang interpretasyon ko. Sabi niya, hindi, itong interpretasyon ko. Akala na nag-meet ng mind, nagpinormahan, hindi pala nag-meet ng minds nila. Okay? So, Importante po yung si meeting of the minds. No? As you can see, na dapat talagang ang, we are on the same page ng ating discussion. No? Kung ibig sabihin, kung deed of sale with right to repurchase, deed of sale with right to repurchase, wala na pong ibang interpretasyon yan. Kung bentahan, bentahan. Kung utang, utang po. Huwag po kayong gumawa ng dokumento na Iba, kapag utang ang pinag-usapan. Tapos kung may prenda or collateral yung property, edi loan and mortgage agreement ng gawin. Huwag po did of sale with the repurchase. Yan po ang inimin ko po. No? Na always, in a certain situation, uh, gumagawa sila ng did of sale with the right to repurchase kasi utang ang usapan. Pero ang document na lang ginagawa, yun, mali yun. Bakit hindi kayo gumawa ng, ng did of uh, nung real estate mortgage at saka promissory note, yun yung loan and mortgage agreement kung utang talaga. May iba, mangutang, ang papapirmahan sa kanila, deed of sale. Na, open deed of sale. Hindi yun. Kasi, ang, ang usapan natin is utang. E bakit ang pinirmahan natin is deed of sale? Di ba? Di ba? Hindi, mali yun, no? So, actually, under the law, pwede po tayo may remedy tayo for reformation of the instrument. Ibig sabihin, ulitin siya because hindi tayo nakaintindihan. While nakaintindihan tayo na talagang utang, pero pinapirma mo sa akin is sa deed of sale. No? Ganon din po sa deed of sale with right to repurchase. Pag yun, hindi yun para sa utang. Talagang totoong bentahan po yan. May karapatan lang siyang i-repurchase yun. Bakit? May mga transaction bang ganon? Yes. Merong iba na gustong gusto talaga yung property ng isang tao. Yung isang tao naman, ayaw naman niya ibibigay. Kaya lang, Sayang din ang bentahan. So, nire-reserve niya yung karapatan niya na bilhin ito balik for, let's say, for sentimental reasons or for any other reasons no, na gusto niyang bawiin ulit. Yung nag bibili naman, willing to take the risk kasi gustong-gusto nga niya yung property. So, sige lang, bigyan kita ng time to repurchase it back and I will just hope and pray na hindi mo bilhin balik para akin na talaga itong property. Okay? Yun po yung totoong deed of sale with the right to repurchase. Wala na pong ibig, ibang, ibang ibig sabihin noon, kundi yun na yun. Huwag, hindi yun bayad sa utang, hindi po yun utang ang transaction, hindi po. Nada, hindi po ganun. Okay? So, it's a clear deed of sale with the right to repurchase. Okay. Now, ang nangyayari kasi, ganito, may katanungan yung aking isang subscriber na scam ba ito? Well, actually, in most cases, delikado itong transaction ito for a debt trap. Kaya nga, bakit debt trap? Utang matatrap ka ba? May utang ka, itatrap ka nila ng mga unscrupulous people na mag-enter niya, nagpapahiram ng pera. Dahil ang muna, ipapipirma sa iyo is uh, deed of sale or deed of sale with right to repurchase. Ang gagawin nila, hindi pa nila isasabay ang deed of sale with right to repurchase sa isang document. Deed of sale lang, tapos merong undertaking na allowing to repurchase. So, yun lang gagawin para separate. Tapos open date. Para pagdating ng time na hindi ka makabayad, is that automatic po, 
i-register ng deed of sale, ito transfer ang title sa kanilang pangalan. That is not right, no? It is a kind of tax. Kasi malaki pang interest, like 10% per month. That is unconscionable. Bawal yun, sabi ng mga Supreme Court, no? Decisions na sobrang taas ng interest na yun. And that is unconscionable. It can be stricken down, no? May mga, meron tayong mga mga remedies dyan. Now, uh, ito ko nga yung katanungan ng ating isa sa mga subscriber na si Voltaire Bernal, no? Sabi niya, How about pack to the retro sale as a kind of land grabbing? Nakuha niya ito doon sa isang mga video lecture natin wherein yung land grabbing, no? scam na land grabbing. No? Well, it could be used, no? itong pack to the retro sale as a means to land grab. Totoo po yan. So, mag-utang. Ano ang utang? 500,000. Magkano ang interest? 10% per month. Okay. Dahil nangangailangan. Sige na lang. Tapos, papirmahin ng deed of sale with right to repurchase. Pack to the retro. Ngayon, pag hindi niya mabayaran after, let's say, 6 months or 1 year na usapan, eh, 10% per month, 50 mil ang buwan niyan. Sa 10 buwan na hindi ka makabayad niyan, doble na. Uh, Kung baga, a principal at interest, the same na. That would now become 1 million Uh, pesos from the 500,000, no? So, paano ka pa makakabayad? Until such time, it is, you will be trapped. Yung utang mo na trap ka. May deed of sale, right to repurchase, akin na ito. Okay? Eh, ang property, ang value ng property, umabot ng 10 million. Imagine, for that amount alone, 500 plus the interest na 500,000, magiging kanyang property. That is a kind of trap. And it's a kind of scheme na pangloloko. No? And, well, sabihin nila, well, you are a person, you know what you did, you signed and everything. Yes, that's correct. However, the law is still there to protect for those who are being trampled upon. Kung sino po yung inaapi ba? Yung niloloko, nandyan pa rin ang batas. In fact, this kind of transaction, you could ask the court na i-declare yan siya as mortgage. You can file a petition in court by declaring it as a mortgage. File ka ng complaint saying, na, Your Honor, ang aming totoong usapan nito is uh, utang, hindi po sale. Bakit na-transfer sa kanya? You want this to be declared as equitable mortgage. Sabi naman ng, ng batas natin, and uh, the judge, yun yung susundin. O nga, no? Magkano ba value ng property market value? 10 million po. Magkano utang? 500,000. Oh, magiging kanya? Ibig sabihin, hindi totoong sale yan, kundi mortgage yan. Okay, order. Uh, This is declared as equitable mortgage. The um, the the person who borrowed the money, you know, complain, is that you are uh, the debtor will be given one year within which to redeem. Para maging kung hindi mo maredeem yan, pwede i foreclose. Okay, so yun po ang ang ibig sabihin niya, no? Debt trap. But we will discuss that on another episode. But what I'm going to discuss, yung real na pacto. The retro sale, yan. Yung totoong pacto, the retro sale po, no? Na, deed of sale with right to repurchase. Bibigyan po kita ng 6 months para i-repurchase ito. So, let's say the property is worth uh, 10 million. Nabili niya ng 10 million din or 9 million. Ibig sabihin, totoong sale. ba? Diba? Hindi siya undervalue sa totoong usapan. Hindi talaga siya utang. Hindi siya in any other means, no? So, ibig sabihin, Meron na siyang karapatan na 6 months within which to repurchase. Yun po ang totoong pacto de retro sale and yan po is a valid legal transaction. May gumagawa ba niyan? Meron po pa konti-konti, no? Not at all times because hindi nga siya famous. Meron lang iba talaga na ayaw talaga ilit go ang property tapos di reserve pa yung karapatan na bawiin ulit. Okay. But nevertheless, he has to pay all the uh, the amount, no? Walang interest. Pero kung may improvements doon, na nagawa at kasama kasi pwede na siya mag-improve, eh, iyon din, i-reimburse na yun. So, yun po ang actual at the toong deed of sale with right to purchase. Now, suppose hindi po, no, in this particular setting kasi, itong nagbenta, no, itong si De La Cruz, Pedro De La Cruz, eh, siya po yung may karapatan na bilhin ito balik within the period of six months na na-agree nila. And, suppose hindi po niya ginawa. Ayan, ayaw niya. So, mangyari niyan, okay, then, sabi nung mag-asawa nila Pedro Reyes and Maria, niya, ano gagawin natin? Ay, transfer na natin. Kung gagamitin nila ang pacto de retro sale 
sa pag-transfer ng title, no? yung titulo sa kanilang pangalan, pwede ba? Pwede naman. Kasi may nandun naman nakalagay, no? Nag-expire naman. However, six months nang lumipas, eh may penalty na yan. Patay tayo sa tiyatawag natin tax penalty sa capital gain tax. Patay tayo sa transfer tax, pati sa documentary stamp tax. So, ibig sabihin, hindi siya appropriate na gagamitin, no? Uh, pero sinasabi ko, pwede. Pero, magpe-penalty ka ang laki-laki niyan. 25% nga, di ba? So, having said that, ano ba ang remedy po kung may ganitong transaction na pack to the retro sale at gusto nang ilipat ang titulo dahil hindi nga na-exercise nung, nung seller ang right niya to repurchase? Ano po ang remedy para hindi tayo magka-tax penalty? Okay. So, ito po si uh, um, si Juan uh, Reyes at saka si Maria Juan and Maria Reyes ano ba ang remedy nila? well, yung back to the retro na document nila mag-file lang sila ng petition in court no? for what we call consolidation of ownership hello, your honor uh, we have this back to the retro sale in fact, naglampas na po 6 months eh, hindi pa po siya hindi niya po nire-purchase and we are praying for the court to issue an order Uh, consolidating the ownership in our people. So, ang gagawin ng korte, o sige, papadalhan ng uh, summons yung kabila. Oh, hindi ka nag-exercise ng six months mo na right? Totoo ba yun? Eh, kung hindi sagutin man niya o hindi niya sagutin, uh, yes, your honor, hindi na, ayoko na, or hindi man siya magsagot, pa default siya, eh, mananalo na ang nag-file ng petition no, for consolidation of ownership. And sa regional trial court po ito kasi incapable of pecuniary estimation. So, magkakaroon ng court order. Order, consolidating the ownership of this property by reason of the pacto de retro sale wherein the defendant did not exercise his right to repurchase within the period of six months as agreed upon by the parties. And therefore, order is being made that this will be consolidated in favor now of the buyer. Yung order of consolidation po, pag maging final and executory, napakaganda po yun. Yun po ang parang deed of sale nyo. Yun po ang gagamitin po ninyo para magpunta na po tayo sa BIR at saka sa local, sa LGU, para bayaran natin yung mga taxes and transfer fee. Ibig sabihin, doon na magka-count no? yung ating period within which to pay. Ano ba yung mga babayaran natin sa BIR? ba? Diba? Review. So, number one, capital gain tax na 6%. Diba? Ang tanong, ano pa? Ito pa, documentary stamp tax na 1.5%. Pati itong tax on transfer of real property na 0.87% of 1% sa local government unit. Dito sa amin, ginawa ko 0.87% of 1% kasi yan lang sa amin dito sa Davao City. Now, yung capital gain tax at dom documentary stamp tax, no? ito, 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 dalawa, na sabi ko sa national taxation yan. 6% and 1.5% total of 7.5% sa BIR, national government. However, itong tax on transfer of real property, 0.87% of 1%, ito po siya is that babayaran natin sa local government. Why? Because it is, is part of the local taxation of the government under Republic Act 7160 ng local government code. Allowed po ang local na mag-charge. No? It's what we call tax on transfer of real property. So, having said that, from the date that it has become final and executory, yung order of consolidation of court, doon tayo uh, magka-count ng period within which to pay all these taxes and sa national and local taxation. Now, review tayo. Capital gain tax. Kailan ba dapat bayaran? Okay? 30 days. Po. 30 days galing saan? From the execution of the sale. Dapat. But in this particular situation, 30 days from the order that makes the order of consolidation final and executory. The final order of the court, no? 30 days po. Sabi po ng batas natin, within 30 days following the sale, exchange, or disposition of real property. Documentary stamp tax. Ano pong sinasabi? Fifth day of the month. no? So, it is due every fifth of the month following the month of notarization. Or in this case, following the finality of the order of or decision of consolidation by the court.
Okay. How about the tax on transfer of real property? Na dito sa Dabo nga, 0.87% of 1%. Sabi po, 60 days. Paano po ang basis? 60 days, it shall be the duty of the seller, donor, transfer, executor, or administrator to pay the tax sale in imposed within 60 days from the date of the execution of the deed or from the date of the residence death. So, ibig sabihin po, from the date of the finality of the order of consolidation, doon po magka-count ang 60 days period. All right. Now, if you'll notice, pati nga yung from the date of the residence death, kung namatay, di ba? Doon din tatak ng 60 days. So, having said that, hindi na tayo mapipinalize kung babayaran mo sa period na yan. Yung six months na yung pasok mo na back to the retro sale, hindi yun ang gagamitin mo. Yun pong order or decision of the court ordering its consolidation in your favor, which has already attained finality. Kailan po mag ng finality isang order or decision ng court kapag walang M motion for reconsideration or any kind of appeal made within 15 days po. After 15 days po, magiging final and executory siya. From that moment on, mag-start na, na rin, magka-count na naman yung period within which you have to pay the national and local taxes to the government. All right. So, thank you so much. So, I hope you learned something dito sa ating pacto de retro sale and I will discuss other topics next time which are interesting topics para po sa ating consumption. Maraming salamat po. Danke and have a nice weekend ahead of you.